All right, we are up and running. Just gonna let you guys get a second to get in here while I take my sip of my Herbalife. You know how it goes. Grab my tablet so I can see any comments. All right, we're all good, all set up. And all herbalife up, green tea, lift off. Already got the workout in, but we're gonna get rolling here in just a second. So if you've seen, you've seen the title of the post, you know we talk about excuses all the time, and obviously no excuses. You hear, you've, you've heard me say it a million freaking times, no excuses. So today we're going to talk about what is the number one excuse that's holding people back. So you can put right in the comments, what is your number one excuse? What is your top excuse that you know you make? You know you're making excuses. So what is your number one excuse? And then I'm going to give you what is the real number one excuse. What is, you know, we're going to uncover the biggest freaking weakest excuse of all time and give the solution to make sure that you never use this excuse and you never let this excuse be used, you know, with you. So as we give you a chance to get in here, get rolling, let me know what your excuses are. We're just gonna, what, is this, what is this broadcast about, this live show every week? Someone asked me, what do, you, what do you even talk about? What is this all about? This is about you know, several things, but it's really about adapting and overcoming. This show, this Steve Says broadcast, this is episode number 33. It's about adapting and overcoming, becoming a better version of yourself every freaking day, getting your shit together, stop being a little bitch, trusting the process, and of course, making no excuses. So today, what is your number one excuse? And I'm going to tell you what is the number one excuse out there that holds people back. The number one bullshit excuse. Like I said, this show, some people will hate it, but most people are going to relate to it. This is personal development, peak freak style. Are you a peak freak? If you're watching this show or you follow us on social media or you come into the gym, then you are definitely a freaking peak freak. So like we always, I always say, life is a war. The invasion is coming. And this show, Steve says, is going to help you get ready for that invasion. What do we got going on here? Just taking a look at your guys' comments or messages, see who's joining us in here, so I don't have to look on the little phone over there. Basically, this is my peak freak perspective to personal development, health, fitness, nutrition, and life. You know, I do, I do live videos all throughout the week, a lot of times on the health and the fitness and nutrition side. Usually, as Steve says, again, is more about your own personal development, which is your mind begins in your mindset, which that's where everything falls in place. You're not going to have good health or good fitness or good nutrition or good fucking life if you don't have, have your shit together in your head first. So this show... This broadcast, Steve says, is usually a little more on the mindset side of things, a motivational type thing to get your, help you get your shit together. If you have any questions or comments, you can put them in here into the comment section. But let me know, what, are you, what, are you, what is your number one excuse? What is your go-to excuse? Your go-to reason why you fail at something or why you don't get something done or why you, why you miss, miss a deadline or a task or a goal. What is your go-to excuse? Put them down there in the comments. I want to hear it. I want to I hear what's going on out there. So let me know, what is your number one excuse? And then I'm going to tell you what's the, the number one and the worst excuse out there. You hear me talk about it all the time. It's everywhere. It's, I should get the fucking thing tattooed on me, but I don't have any tattoos. But no excuses, right? You've heard me say it all the time. Today, we're going to uncover the number one invalid excuse of all time. This is the go-to excuse for most people when things don't go their freaking way. Or and you know they don't get the shit done that they, they know they're supposed to get done. Or they don't get to the level they're supposed to get to. Or for whatever reason, not making enough the money that they think they should be making. They don't get the promotion at their job. This is the number one freaking excuse that we're going to go over today. This excuse covers all the freaking bases. It can be used in almost any situation, and it's used all the fucking time. I hear it literally. I hear the excuse on a daily basis from tons of people out there on social media, in person, all over the freaking place, in all areas of life. We're not just talking the gym here. We're talking about in fucking life in general. This is the top excuse. So tell me some of your top excuses here. What are the excuses? Everyone has excuses. Everyone makes their excuses now and then until you learn to overcome them and stop, you know, being a little bitch basically. But tell me some here, some, what are some of your biggest obstacles? Some of your excuses, not even really obstacles. Excuse is not an obstacle. It's something totally different. So who thinks they know what the number one excuse is? Can someone put here in the comments what they, what they think the number one excuse is out there that people use? You know, this is, this is what people, it's the easiest way for, out of a jam for most people. The easiest way to, deflect attention off themselves. Who can tell me what this number one excuse is? I'm going to give you guys a couple seconds while I take another quick sip of my Herbalife. Who's on here watching? Anyone know what that number one excuse is? Andrew Benner, you should, you should have a good idea. Let's go. What do we got? No, time is not. 
The excuses that people use for most things are time. They don't have enough time or they don't have enough money. But I'm not even, I'm talking about excuse for, for why someone even fails or why someone doesn't get it done. Not even that, that's, just, that's, those are excuses for when someone wants to start something. They say they have no time. They have no money or they'll, you know, whatever. I almost, I almost gave the freaking, I almost gave the word away. Who can tell me? Quick, you got like two seconds. You got to keep it rolling. Keep it rolling. Throw some ideas out there or tell me what your excuses are. Don't bullshit. This is all about transparency. Show me, tell me what your excuses are that you make. Time is an excuse, but that time is an excuse. Those are excuses to get started. We're talking about you, you're in the mix. You're in there. You, you, whatever. You're going, you're rolling. This is your excuse why you didn't get shit done or why you didn't hit a certain, you know, goal or something. Too busy at work. That, um, we're getting a little closer, but not really. All right, I'll give you some hints of what this is. This is when people deflect the attention off of themselves. This, this excuse is really to hold responsibility or to find fault with something or someone. To place the responsibility for fault or error somewhere else, not on yourself. Can someone tell me what the freaking word is? Family, family also, the way that we're going to get to that. It, that's part of, that's in there somewhere, but that kind of is directed towards the family at times. But who could tell me what it is? You're holding responsibility. You're finding fault with something. You're deflecting the attention off yourself onto someone else. Finding the fault or error. It's sometimes it could be thought of as almost an attack on someone else. You know, the, the, the official, my official definition is, you know, I can't do it because it has the word in there, but you gotta, you gotta figure this out. I got three seconds. Procrastination. Blaming others. There it is. Blame. Blaming others. Blame. Blame is the word we're looking for. And Andrew Benner got it again. He always is hacking my shit, but I gave you like 50 fucking hints on this. So you should have had it. Blame could be a, you know, criticizing someone else. It's, it's giving fault to someone else. Like I was saying, deflecting the attention off yourself. My official definition of blame, if you're blaming other people or situations, then basically, I don't know, you're just being a little bitch. That's what you need to do. You need to grow the fuck up. That goes into the next thing. But in, in like business, say, someone gets a promotion faster than you or a competitor crushes you. You, you blame someone else for it. You blame them for cutting you out or you blame them for cheating or being an ass kisser or whatever it is. You know, forget the fact that you know deep inside you were slacking on a recent project or you know you could have done 10 times more than you did than just the bare minimum that you did as, as you know, as the, the other person was going above and beyond the call of duty, you know, trying and working 10 times harder than you, but you'll sit there and blame everything around you. Or maybe you don't finish a project or on, on a deadline and you blame a coworker that had no impact on the situation. You'll find anyone, anyone around. Sometimes someone will describe the first closest fucking person to blame or the situation. Talk about we're in a gym setting. You don't lose any weight or you don't improve your run time and you're, you're a runner or even your, your performance goals don't improve or whatever your fitness goals are. You go and blame the trainer or you blame your spouse or, or your, you blame your kids. They wouldn't let you or they didn't let you. Have, you didn't have enough time because of your kids. You're, so when you were saying family and time, that was kind of correct, but it's the blame game. You're blaming other people, other, you know, a situation, some bullshit is just a blame. It's just an excuse. It's the most pathetic excuse there is deflecting it off yourself. For, you know, forget the fact that you skipped half your workouts and on the weekend you decide to have a few fucking drinks, you know, because you know it was... Maybe your neighbor's cousin's pet fucking goldfish's birthday. So you couldn't pass up on the homemade double bacon cheesecake that they had with the fucking candles on top because I just would have been rude, you know, to not want to try out, you know, Aunt Nancy's fucking cheesecake. That would just be rude. So, you know, or the workout wasn't intense for you or the workout was too hard for you or it was not fun or you weren't motivated or whatever else it is, you know, or all those at the same fucking time. Who knows what it is? Those are all just blaming someone else, blaming something else when you need to, you know, I almost gave away the next part of this, but we're going to keep rolling. You, you have all the, if you have all the tools and the guidance and the motivation and the leadership and the path is set right in front of your fucking feet, you know, no one can storm down that path for you towards your goals, towards your dreams, towards your freaking destiny. You can seek guidance and you can seek help and get encouragement from experts or even not even experts, maybe just people who've been there and done that and, and have experienced what you're going through or what you're looking to go through or where you're trying to get to. They've been there and they're there. You know, people that have accomplished what you're looking to accomplish. But none of these people can walk that fucking path for you. You need to stop blaming other people and take the first fucking step down that path that was carved out for you. Even some professional athletes, they lose a game or they lose a fight and, and they have 17 freaking excuses laying the blame on someone else. They blame their coach, the fans, their teammates, the referee, the freaking weather. It's, it's nonsense. It's bullshit and it's a number one, it's a top excuse. 
People will blame like, the, the weather from stopping them. They'll blame their boss. They'll blame their parents for the way they raised them. They'll blame freaking God. They'll blame the devil. They'll blame the fucking president. They will blame the bully from back in elementary school. They'll, they'll find anyone. They'll even blame their own fucking family members. Uh, you know, a fucking sad state of affairs when, you, when you're going to go and blame your own failures or things you fucked up on or things you didn't do out of laziness or whatever other reason it is and you're gonna blame your own family and people blame their kids oh it's my kids this and that oh your kids are that way probably because you were blaming shit on them and whatever stop blaming people for shit people will blame every man or woman or a fucking goat before they blame themselves no matter how clearly something might might be their fault so don't be the fucking victim the, the you know poor me boo fucking who for me i have the worst luck it's not my fault nothing is ever my fault as you can see these are not valid excuses, yet these are what a lot of people tend to go to, to, you know, to take the blame off themselves, to deflect that blame off themselves. Some people will go to any lengths to take the blame off themselves, up to the point of sacrificing their own morals and their own freaking values. They would rather destroy someone else's life rather than taking the blame for one little tiny little thing, you know, and then they end up consciously flat out fucking lying. And there isn't anything much worse than a, than a freaking liar. They're, a li liars are just freaking disgusting. That's that. You don't even have to guess the word liar because that's just an easy fucking one. Don't, don't fucking lie to cover up your own bullshit or your own failures or your own laziness. It's just a sleazeball move, you know, to take the blame off yourself. Don't be a fucking liar. It's disgusting. It's just a disgusting trait to have. The truth is, if you're any kind of leader or person of moral value, you, you would accept the blame even when it might not be directly your fault. People sometimes get caught up in the trap. They think that, you know, they could do no wrong. They're fucking just perfect. They're, their shit is never their fault. Well, guess what? Your fucking feet stink too, and so does your shit. So blaming something, someone else, or blaming a situation, or whatever else, is just a bitch move, and it's an action of, of fucking cowards, really, to put it simple. So please, please, please do not be that person. And I'm pretty sure anyone watching this is not that person, except for you fucking haters out there that watch my shit, just because you want to see, you know, whatever. You want to see the failure of me, or whatever, but fuck you too. Anyway, moving on. This leads us to the solution of the blame game problem. It's time to grow the fuck up. And that's the next word. Who's got the next word? Who's paying attention? Who can tell me what this next word might be? We don't want to be playing that blame game because we know that's the number one excuse is blaming others because you're just lazy. Blaming other people for, you know, stupid shit you're doing or stuff that you didn't do you're supposed to be doing. When you need to walk your feet down your path, even you could be led, you could be helped by the experts and by people helping you, but... Take responsibility is pretty much what this means, but I'm looking for one word. Vanessa, duh, you should know this word right now. Even though it's a cheat if you're knowing it, because you and I were just speaking recently, like last night, about this fucking word. It does mean to basically take a... Oh, I almost said it. And ownership, yes, that is also under this, but this is one word I'm looking for. It is to take responsibility, to take ownership, you know, liability, to be, you know, obliged to... Put yourself on the hook. Who can tell me what we're looking for? Who can tell me my freaking word? Someone. Someone out there accountable is the word. Vanessa, you screwed that shit up. You gave her all the top keys and Louise got the freaking word. Hold yourself accountable. You know, being, you know, that's being responsible or answerable for your actions or for where you want to be or for why you are where you are or why you're not where you want to be. You know, it's. I always like to give my personal definition of all these things. You know, my personal definition is better than that, you know, we, Webster or whatever that is. It wasn't Webster, a little guy, a little guy on TV a while ago. Accountability, yes, is the word. I always like to give my own definition. So since as Steve says, yes, I'm going to give my definition. Accountability simply to me means being a fucking grown up. You know, playing dumb or naive, that is for little fucking children. They can get away with that shit, but grown ups cannot. You need to grow the fuck up and be accountable for your actions. Now, you can't only be accountable for what you do, but you also need to hold yourself accountable for what you don't do. A lot of times, inaction is much worse than taking action. Imperfect action is much better than zero fucking action. Even if it's the wrong decision, it could be corrected and learned from. Action is better than, you know, imperfect action is better than inaction. You need to take responsibility for your actions and your inactions. You need to own up to those actions and hold yourself accountable. You also need to hold others accountable in your tribe that are around you. You know, hold them accountable for their actions. It's time to start creating freaking solutions, not just complaining about the problems or blaming others for your problems or your mistakes or your team's mistakes or your office's mistakes or whatever it is. Find the fucking solution. Be accountable for it. If you're a leader, you should hold yourself accountable for everyone's actions on your team. Not, just, not blame anyone, 
but take freaking responsibility and ownership for any problems or mistakes, even if they weren't made directly by you. That's what accountability is. I remember once back in Marine Corps boot camp, while we, we were off doing some training that didn't involve our weapons, and it's fucking rare for us to do some training that we don't have our weapons, but we would have to sometimes stack them up in like this little, looked like a little uh, triangle where all the weapons were standing up, leaning against each other in a circle, triangle, whatever the hell it was. But while we went to go do our training, someone had to sit back and watch the gear. It's rare. We usually did everything with our freaking rifles. We'd sleep with them. We'd eat with them. But sometimes, whatever, we're climbing on stuff, whatever, whatever the hell that shit we were doing. If we're doing some, some other shit, we would have to, you know, someone would sit back and watch the gear. So I was a fire team leader and, and put one of my Marines in the fire team responsible for washing our gear that day. The Marine I put in charge, this fucker fell asleep while on watch. And while he's sleeping, one of the drill instructors, one of the drill instructors comes and sees him sleeping. He takes a couple of rifles, takes some gear, just to fuck with him, just because he basically caught him sleeping, so to teach him a lesson. So we get back to the squad bay, and the gear's missing. The Marine that fell asleep says, that, you know, he says he was on guard, he was walking his post the whole time, keeping everything secure. No one ever came by, which he was obviously fucking lying. Then he tries to blame another Marine in the squad, saying he thought that, you know, he, they lost it earlier, that he had seen them with something or other, trying to make some bullshit story just to get out of it, when he was clearly fucking sleeping. The drill instructor's clearly saw him freaking sleeping. You know, he fucking knew he fell asleep. He was just being a scared little bitch and blaming someone else, not holding himself accountable. All four drill instructors started brutalizing this kid for over 20 minutes straight, 20 minutes nonstop tor torturing this kid while the entire platoon was watching. The kid was laying on the floor, crying, ready to pass out in his own blood and sweat and piss and puke and all that other shit, gasping for air, ready to die. So I went over, I picked him up, I told him to go back to his bunk and I told the drill instructor that it was my fire team and it was my mistake. I should have noticed that he wasn't fit for watch at that time. So I made the critical mistake and it was my decision to put him on the watch. And so I was going to take his place up there. And so they obliged my request and they proceeded to torture me for another 40 freaking minutes outside in the rain in the sand pit. But little did they know, they picked the wrong fucker to try and torture because that shit was fun as hell. I loved every minute of it. They basically eventually just said, Eckert, get the fuck out of my face because I love that shit. Did it with a smile. Fucking 13 weeks of boot camp, 13 of the most fun weeks of my life. Awesome shit right there. Anyway, two weeks later, I was moved up to a squad leader and remained a squad leader for the remainder of the 13 weeks of the training, and I ended up graduating with a meritorious promotion. Now, that was all about basically being taking accountability for my mistakes, my actions, my inactions, my decisions, and even if I didn't directly cause the loss, loss of the gear, I was owning up to that shit, and that's what basically being a leader is. You can make a mistake, you could fail, you can even make, make a decisive decision that leads to failure or loss, and then you can lie about it, you can cover it up, you can blame it on someone else as, your, as a fucking scapegoat, or I would much rather someone make a decision that turns out to be a big freaking failing mistake, then own up to it, learn from it, become a better person because of the entire experience from A to B. Now that's what accountability is, owning up to your shit, living up to it, being responsible for it, and once, once you learn to hold yourself accountable for your actions, good or bad, then you can start holding others accountable. But even better than holding others accountable, you can start helping others to become accountable for their actions. So once you start holding others accountable and they learn to be accountable for themselves, now they can continue the cycle forward. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? You're following that? So first take accountability for your own actions. Don't blame others or be a fucking scumbag liar. Then hold others in your world, in your circle, in your tribe, accountable for their actions. Then you could take it to the next level and pay it forward and help others to learn to hold themselves accountable. That is the way that, you know, to have a major impact on people's lives and cause major positive freaking change in your world. Because now you've inspired and motivated and taught someone else the value of holding themselves accountable. So now the cycle of change and positivity is spread throughout their circle going forward and it's just spreading all around with, with the, everyone holding themselves accountable for their actions and helping each other out and it can impact even more people. The point is, grow the fuck up, help people out, help people help themselves, which will eventually help them to help others by being accountable, and that's how you make a major fucking impact on your mission and your goals and your freaking vision and a clear path to get there. So, let's, you know, when it comes down to it, get someone to help you if you need to be, if you, if you need some help with accountability. Get someone to help you, get a coach, get a mentor, get a trainer. You know, someone from across the country the other day, I said, I put a post out there. I said, are you a peak freak? And what does a peak freak mean to you? A lot of, a lot of people answer, but a lot of you didn't answer. I want to see some more on there. I'm going to repost that or whatever, or bump that up to the top. Someone from across the country is watching, you know, one of the episodes. He saw that post and he said, I'm all the way in Washington state, 
So I'll just have, I, I can't, I'm not a peak freak, so I'll just watch from far. Listen, if you're watching this, if you're following us on social media, if you're living the way of life of a peak fucking freak, then you are a peak freak. You don't have to necessarily come into our gyms to be a peak freak. You still are one of us. Or maybe you were in the gyms and you moved away. You're still a freaking peak freak, okay? And if, and if you need help, if you need, to be, need help to be accountable, reach out to someone on our team. Reach out to me. Reach out to one of the other trainers. Reach out to you know, one of the hundred fucking peak freaks that come into our gyms every day. There is a whole squad, a whole team, a whole peak freak family out here ready to help you, to hold you, to keep yourself accountable for your actions. And also, even more importantly, keep you accountable for your freaking inactions. We are here to help you, to guide you, to help you, you know, to hold you accountable, to help you to hold yourself accountable and to you know, reach your goals, but more importantly, become the best fucking version of yourself possible every freaking day. No matter where you are in the world, if you are a peak freak, we are here to hold you accountable and to help you and to you know, make an impact on your freaking destiny and to lead you down that path towards your goals and your dreams and your visions. Delandre Williams, yes, you are a freak. You are a freaking super freak. So that's all we got for today. So the point was, don't be a little bitch and blaming other people. Be a fucking grown up and hold yourself accountable. Don't be a fucking liar. And then pay it forward. Once you're able to put yourself in a place to hold yourself accountable, make other people hold themselves accountable to you at first. And the second they do that, that's going to be a learning process for them to now learn to just hold themselves accountable without someone having to babysit them. And then they'll able be able to hold other people, teach it and hold other people accountable. And it just spreads out and it just becomes a massive fucking movement of positivity, of peak freaks, getting crazy fucking results, changing their lives and impacting positivity all around their freaking, their whole sector. That's it for now. I'll see you guys next time. If you have any questions or comments, put them in this thing. If you want me to shut the fuck up, then hold, don't hold your breath because that shit ain't happening anytime soon. The number one excuse was blaming other people. Not going to happen. Make no freaking excuses. I'll see you guys next time.